babies. They're cute, they're silly, and they make the world go round. And because of all of these features, a lot of people would argue that it's hard not to like babies. I mean, just look at them. Well, I'm here to prove those people wrong. Uh, kind of. I'd like to consider myself neutral, positive leaning on the real life baby scale, but as for the video game baby scale, that's another story. After ragging pretty hard on the babysitting mama baby in my cooking mama video, a few people thought that I shouldn't be so harsh on the little guy. But a few people also requested I make a video giving the same treatment to even more virtual babies, so sorry babysitting mama apologists, my hands are tied. It's not that babies as a concept are inherently weird or anything, especially as a subject for a video game. Or for any media, really. If there weren't games made about babies, there would still be baby-based movies and TV, or existing franchises that are babyified, which is a whole dark and strange rabbit hole of its own that I will not get into today. Baby dolls are by far the most popular baby-based product, existing for countless years as a fun way for kids to simulate parenthood without any actual danger of having a three-year-old look after an infant. From whispering babies to peeing babies, these dolls have enough features to pretty successfully capture the ups and downs of what it means to be a parent. I was never especially into baby dolls when I was younger, instead opting to use the doll stroller we had at home to wheel around my favorite stuffed dog. Because obviously, Brownie, the creatively named brown dog, was way cuter than a dumb baby. Even if those bottles with the disappearing milk and orange juice were strangely enticing. For the others who were like me and didn't really buy into the baby doll appeal, there was still another alternative in the vast baby product market. Baby video games, and more specifically, those made for the Nintendo Wii and Nintendo DS. While I wasn't big into baby dolls, video games were something that was definitely right up my alley. I was even already accustomed to baby games from playing Flash games like Babysit Baby Chrissy on Barbie.com. But the Wii and the DS baby games were something different altogether, and there were a lot. Probably not even exceeding 20 altogether, but arguably still way too many for any one world to need, and all trying to capitalize on what I'd call the virtual baby boom of the mid to late 2000s. The titles themselves are an indicator that maybe there were too many of these games that were popping up all over the place. From simply My Baby and Baby and Me to I Love Babies and Baby Pals, the game names seem to indicate that after only a few titles, they were quickly running out of good ideas. Although I wasn't big on babies myself, Baby Pals was actually the first and only baby care game I ended up playing when I was younger. I was still more of a dog person than a baby person when this game came out, playing games like Webkins and Nintendogs to get my hardcore gaming fix. But when my sister came home with a game called Baby Pals for the DS, I figured this game about taking care of low-poly virtual children was close enough to Nintendogs and decided to play it anyway. The game starts off with a rousing, honky-tonky country tune to get you into the baby wrangling mood which I think is just so random and unrelated from the theme of the game that you just can't help but love it. When making my baby with the Sims player in me, adjusting all of the sliders to max, there's some lullaby music playing in the background, which is much more appropriate. There's also a repeated loop of about five different baby sounds playing too, so repetitive that as I was filming the gameplay for this video, my brain unlocked a secret Pandora's box of useless knowledge from 2007, and I actually knew the pattern of sounds that were coming next. I don't know if that says more about the game or about me. You can't immediately choose the hair color of your baby, only the skin tone and the obviously corresponding single hair color that matches, but you can give it Alexandria's Genesis, so that's pretty cool. After signing a contract of love and care with a binding green checkmark, the game really starts to take off. From the thrills of powdering diaper rash to patty cake Simon says, the care in Baby Pals is all done through different mini-games, each more riveting than the last. There's even a store where you can buy different items with hearts earned through successful mini-games, complete with a fashionable curly Q hairstyle and different diaper designs for all of the three genders, regular, ducky, and girl. 
While I know I'm not really the target audience for this game, and maybe I never was even when I was younger, I still can't help but kind of roll my eyes at how simple and lifeless the minigames are. I remember liking the baby food cooking minigame, which was just a low effort Cooking Mama ripoff, and I especially liked the blender part for some reason. I also liked the dress up options in the game, even if some of the hairstyles were a little questionable. But beyond the satisfying press of buttons on a blender and low resolution clothing textures, there's not a whole lot more to this game to keep you invested. Especially not when the main draw of the game, the babies, look like this. There's a certain special quality to Wii and DS game graphics, as they're in a strange transition period of gaming where the 3D visuals aren't quite as basic and blocky as the PS1 or N64, but the consoles were still smaller and more limited than the PS3, Xbox 360, and other consoles of the era, and they end up just not fully delivering on the visuals, to say the least. And while I could get past the way that Hannah Montana looked a little more like Alexis Texas in her DS game I obsessively played also around 2007, something I've decided in hindsight after the virtual baby boom is that small little creatures that babble nonsense and crawl around on the ground are really not the thing that should be made even more unsettling by being rendered in low quality compressed graphics. Babies are so appealing to people mostly because they're soft and natural. But the babies of the virtual baby boom seem to be the complete opposite. Angular, pixelated, and uncanny. From canned animations to the way baby's limbs will sometimes clip through its own body or environment, to the angry fits the baby gets when it hasn't been taken care of, or when you didn't feed it green goop well enough, Baby Pals is a great example of the less appealing virtual babies and is not for the faint of heart. Even when they're smiling, the babies in this game look more like a 40-year-old's head on a baby's body. Especially with some of the hairstyle options. I'm pretty sure it wasn't intended to be this way, but the DS emulator that I used for this video also had points where the game would just randomly drop in frame rate. The Peekaboo game was especially laggy the entire time, which made it a little harder to play and I eventually ended up losing. This wasn't a huge deal progression-wise, but the lag combined with Jelly Baby's crying and the stuttering lullaby music in the background made this loss horrific, to say the least. I, I won't lose at Peekaboo again, I I'm sorry. And wouldn't you know, Baby Pals is just the beginning. Although I fortunately never played any of the other console baby games of the time, I'd still like to go over the strange nature of not just the unfortunate looking babies of these games, but the gameplay and style choices of the niche video game genre that no one really seemed to ask for. Baby Life is a perfect example of a virtual baby boom title, checking all of the boxes of all of the issues I personally have with these games. To start, there's no rootin' tootin' country jingle that plays on the title screen, so it's clearly already lost points for that. The player is taken to a personality quiz of sorts that will decide the corresponding personality of the baby, all while it floats in an ethereal womb and waits to meet you. The game is described in one promotional article as having 3 million unique possibilities for a baby's look and handcrafted personality, which I think does already make it a bit better than Baby Pals and its limited customization options, but what each baby may bring in its uniqueness is certainly overshadowed by the way that they look. There's this sweeping zoom to the player's first meeting of their baby that's clearly meant to be grand and maybe even emotional, but it ends up revealing this thing in a shaky camera shot that's reminiscent of a found footage movie, and it does not do this little creature any favors. I know that I've ragged on other video game babies in the past, but how could I not have something to say about this one too? Having larger than life heads seems to be a common theme for some baby game titles, but this is definitely the biggest that I've seen so far. It's so big that even its hairline can't keep up. And it's clear that the game is going for a more cartoony style, so I could ignore the bulbous noggin, but the facial expressions that were probably a selling point of this game made me feel even more unsettled than the head that they're textured onto. I mean, look at that! This thing is gonna take revenge on me for stroking and tickling its face <laughs> immediately after it was born. 
And don't even get me started on the sprites in the kindergarten minigame. If anyone used to watch Big Comfy Couch, maybe you can understand where I'm coming from. While the visual design of the babies in Baby Life clearly aren't my style, I still think as far as gameplay goes, it's pretty decent. The same basic care functions like putting the baby to bed, feeding, and changing are still completed through different mini-games, but they feel a lot more involved and thought out compared to the lackluster games in Baby Pals, even the Blender mini-game that strangely captured my attention so much as a kid. Really riveting stuff. Plus, Baby Life has the added bonus of no lagging slow-mo baby Godzilla moments after failing at Peekaboo, so you could count that as a cool feature too. So despite some of the slight downsides to Baby Life, the game and the babies aren't terrible overall. Maybe for some people, the art style is even kind of cute. This though, definitely not. I Love Babies is a game whose title seems to appeal to players who love the look of an innocent, cuddly baby but that is not what this game is about. After yet again first viewing your baby in the womb, you get to choose its genetics, which is an interesting and more realistic approach to the baby making process, but no matter its genes, it will always look both slightly demonic and like a potato at the same time. So you bought this game because you love babies, huh? Let me know how that's going. Beyond the baby, this game also creeps me out because of this tutorial nanny that teaches you how to play the game. Initially, she's pretty neutral and just there to help, even if she does have a thousand yard stare, but she gets more angry the longer the baby isn't properly cared for. I guess that's understandable considering it's her job to look after it and all, but does she have to look so scary? The Baby Pals Godzilla moments have nothing on tutorial nanny. I already went over Babysitting Mama in my Cooking Mama video, a game with yet another uncanny baby that is actually a physical accessory used with the Wii Remote in-game, but I was surprised to find that there was actually another game that had a real doll that's used as an extra accessory with the game. The optional accessory baby that came with Baby and Me was literally just a regular doll that looked nothing like the baby in the game and that the Wii Remote could be strapped onto instead of inserted in the secret crevice of the Babysitting Mama plush doll. So I'll give Babysitting Mama some credit for a more creative toy. I'm not quite sure which in-game baby I prefer though, as Baby and Me does have a more realistic style, but as with the majority of these games, they can never quite nail all of the proportions and simple babiness of the babies. In this game, they look just a little too large and vaguely like Macaulay Culkin. Maybe that one's just me. I know what you're thinking. All of these baby games have been great so far, with no flaws whatsoever. But what about a storyline? A universe? Some kind of cohesion to these baby games to make the world feel alive? Well, the Imagine line of games sort of does neither of those things, but it is kind of close in its own way. Despite the five different Imagine baby games all sharing the Imagine part of their titles, they're not really all connected. Imagine Babysitters is another game with a more cartoony style, the most prominent features of the babies being their huge anime eyes, and they sort of make me think of a My Sims character, which isn't the worst thing to be compared to, especially not with the track record of some of the other babies, not naming any names. The adults in this game actually creep me out more than the babies, so that's a plus, I think? Imagine Babies, <laughs> with a Z, so that only cool kids can play it, is kind of just Imagine Babysitters with a different skin and a change in art style, but only between the minigames, so I guess that kind of also counts as them being in the same universe, if that's what you're after. After Imagine Babies, there's Imagine Babies Fashion, which also features the returning art style, except this time you're dressing up babies in more than just curly cues and ducky diapers. This is probably one of the most unique of the baby games there is, if only because it focuses less on the typical feeding and changing aspects of childcare, and instead is all about cool babies with a Z rocking cowboy hats, sunglasses, and a diaper. But even though this baby does seem really cool, just like the Z in the title prepared us for, babies dressing up isn't nearly as cool as babies that know how to party. Imagine Babies is an interesting continuation of the Imagine Babies series that's sort of like Mario Party, but instead of Mario characters, there are only babies, and instead of interesting and creative minigames, there are baby-related games like Rock the Crib Challenges and Diaper Change Races. 
The mini games in Imagine Party Babies range from simple tasks like puzzles and memory games to more involved matches of racing and obstacle courses to straight up violent tasks of hitting jack-in-the-boxes with hammers, the other rival babies with snowballs, and this recurring lion mascot character that the babies just despise for some reason. It's certainly a creative take on the multiplayer minigame party format, and I know that the Wii and DS generally tend to get more family-friendly games made for them, but I didn't know that such a niche market of family-friendly, baby-related multiplayer party games <laughs> existed out there, let alone was created and entirely made up by this single Imagine game. So, the Imagine games aren't much of a series necessarily, but they do all seem to exist in the same universe somewhat, so maybe that kind of counts? Moving on to another game, My Baby Girl or My Baby Boy is another title that features babies with a bit of genetics and bulbous heads, we've seen this before, but I don't actually hate this one that much. Even with their big heads, these babies are actually kinda cute? Their varying facial expressions successfully give them more life and depth, as opposed to some of the other baby contestants we've seen. There are different rooms of the house to visit, like in I Love Babies, but this time there are less nannies angrily berating you. Zero, in fact, so I'd consider that an improvement. And while some of the minigames are a little more detailed than I'd prefer, we've already established that I'm not exactly the target audience for these games, so if anything, more detail, even diaper changing details, is what I'd consider another positive. There's also room decorating, clothing options, including a cool cowboy hat, and different hairstyles that aren't nearly as atrocious as Jelly Babies back in Baby Pals. And interestingly, My Baby is actually the first game in a series, a real series of baby games, where in the progressing installments the baby in the game is older and the gameplay revolves around the new care tasks for each stage of life. So there are cute babies, no tutorial nannies, no peekaboo freakouts, and the gameplay seems fun and interesting? I'd say the only thing missing here is a Blender minigame, then this would really be the perfect virtual baby boom game. I have to say, discovering the perfect pixelated infant in Dream Jelly's unofficial battle of the virtual babies wasn't necessarily my intention in making this video, but maybe the real fun of this video was the babies we made along the way. Despite all of the duds, it's good to know that there is a baby game, no, a trilogy of baby games that seem to deliver the full parenthood experience in a neat gaming package. If there's anything you take away from this video, I hope it's that you were also able to discover your own ideal baby game, and also learned which games and newly discovered terrors to avoid. A huge thank you to Kayla Geary, Bunzo, Dylan Webb, Johan Aik, Kevin Evans, Mark Kent, M. Wee, Paige, Paper Sam, Sarah, The Goomba Mattress, Unan Omondor, and the rest of my patrons for supporting me. Congratulations on all being born at the exact same time. I am not paying any child support though. <laughs>